What's up candle makers? Today we're going to embark on a journey to make some really beautiful candles. But not only that, today we're also going to conquer the three most common mistakes made when making candles so you don't have to make them. But first we need to gather our supplies. So you will need, I'll be using soy wax but you know, go with your own preference, wick, glue dots or wick stickers, a glass container, double boiler, thermometer, some sticks, weighing scale, and for a little extra touch, you can add some fragrance oil, colouring, or some floral decor. To begin, measure out how much wax you will need. I find that using around double the amount of your container seems to be just about enough. This might look like a lot, but once you melt it down, it's not going to be that much. Next, we're going to weigh the amount. Put this on, set it to zero, and then we'll add in the wax. The reason why we're going to weigh it is so that we can know how much fragrance oil to use in it later on. But I'm going to get into that soon. Take a medium sized pot and fill it quarter of the way with water. Now set your cooker to a medium to high heat and then add a bowl. Or if you have a candle wax melting pot you can use that too. I can't help myself but do this. So satisfying. So we're going to melt the wax to 85 degrees Celsius and in the meantime you're just going to stir occasionally until everything is melted. In the meantime prepare your container. So I'm going to use some glue dots that I have but you can use wick stickers or a glue that can handle the heat. Use that also. In my situation I'm going to use two wicks because I've got a wider space to work with and I want to make sure that all the wax gets used when it's burning. But if you have a smaller one just use one wick. Or if you have even larger than mine again go for three wicks. We want to make sure the wick stays in place and secure when we pour the wax in. Last thing we want is it moving around or floating to the top on us. And to help keep these in place, I'll be using two sticks. If you don't have sticks, you can also just use a clothes peg. Stick it into the spring part in here, like so. And it'll help you to keep that wick in place. The tip is place your wick inside an empty pan case, and then it makes it so much easier for you to get it into these smaller jars and it'll help you to get it nice and centered like so. I can't be the only person that really wants to eat these. They look like white chocolate buttons. Yum, yum, yum. Do not eat your wax, by the way. I hope I don't have to say that, but just in case, do not eat your wax. The reason we want to reach 85 degrees is because at this point, the wax has expanded enough that the oil will be able to bond well with it. So it's important to reach this higher number. Okay, so once we reach 85 degrees, we're gonna then add in our fragrance oil. But fragrance oil is gonna bring us to our first common mistake made. So adding too little amount of oil is gonna to lead to you not receiving enough of a scent tro. Adding too much oil is gonna to lead to the oil sweating out of the candle wax. If the flame is to catch onto those oils, it could be hazardous and it could start a fire. A good rule of thumb is to add from five to 10% of your wax amount. I'm gonna go with 10% because I'm using soy wax and then I found in the past that using soy wax can sometimes lead to not getting much of a scent tro. So I kind of find it's better to go to the higher end. You can check on your fragrance oil to see what the flash point is. Whatever that is, go with that one. Okay, we've reached 85. Let's take this off the heat. Well, let's add our fragrance oil in. So mine comes, mine was 58. 10% of that. I'm just going to throw in six. Maybe prepare your calculations at the beginning. There's no harm in being organized. Now take it from the heat. So we're going to stir gently for about two minutes. So it's important to make sure the fragrance oil and the wax actually mix well together so that you get an even scent throughout your candle. If you're going to use some coloring, this is also a great time to add that in. I find that with soy wax, you need to add a little bit more fragrance oil to really get the scent compared to if you're using paraffin wax. Let me know if you'd be interested in knowing the difference between soy wax and paraffin wax. And maybe also adding in a parasoy, which is mixing both of them together. Uh, and I can make a video for you. Okay, once you've finished stirring, we're going to let the wax cool down to about 57 degrees before we add it into our container. Now get ready because here comes mistake number two, sinkholes and air bubbles. So sinkholes can occur if the wax is poured at too hot of a temperature or if the container is too cool. So this will cause the wax to cool at too fast a pace near the edge of the container or near the wick. So for best results, heat your container up before you add the wax inside of it and make sure to pour the wax in at the required temperature. 
Okay, so slowly and gently pour your wax into your container. We want to avoid as many air bubbles as we can. And then we're going to make our candles really stand out. It's also good if you want to leave a little bit of wax behind. So if you do have any imperfections, you can just go back over it with that little bit of wax to cover them up and smoothen everything out. I just lost so much wax. <gasps> oh. So before we get into any finishing touches, I'm gonna to bring us on to our next mistake, which is rough surfaces and cracks. This can happen if the wax is poured at too cool of a temperature, or stirring it too aggressively, if water somehow got into your wax, or if your candle cooled too quickly, which I'm gonna explain a little bit more of that near the end. Okay, so now let's make these candles shine with some little decorative items. I'm gonna add in a few rose petals. So these are all actually ingredients that you would use in gin. That's where I found them, in the gin oil in the shop. I swear I was there looking for these. Okay, so now we're gonna leave it to cool for 24 hours. Here's some advice to help you prevent them from cooling incorrectly. Do not put it in the fridge. I know it's tempting, you want it to go quicker. Don't do it, okay? Try to keep it in a place that's at room temperature. Don't leave it near a radiator or near a draft. Uh, don't leave it in your garage or anywhere like that that could suddenly drop in temperature too much. If you stick to these things, then you should have more success in how the final look is. Okay, so I left the candle to dry, and now what we're going to do is cut the wicks about a quarter of an inch away from the wax. Give or take. <sighs> okay. All these different mistakes that you can make, like sinkholes and air bubbles, they won't ruin your candle, they just, your candle won't look as pretty. So mine didn't turn out to have any sinkholes or didn't have any rough surfaces or anything on it, so I can leave mine as is, but you can always top up with that little bit of extra wax if you want to, or need to. Keep an eye out for some more candle making videos that will be coming out very soon. Thank you guys for watching, bye bye.